Philemon, chapter 11, uh, verse 11, chapter 1, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me, whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him, that is, my own bowels, whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bounds of the gospel. But without thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be as if it were of necessity, but willingly. Now again, we're writing a story here of Paul is sending a letter to Philemon, who's a slave owner. And we're talking about a slave that has run away by uh, Onassimus. Now, you ever wonder what the unprofitable meant in his labor that he did, or that this man was a worker who knew not God? Unprofitable. This is the condition of Nazareth before he got saved. This is the being of this man under Philemon and is the unprofitable salvation wise? Or is it the fact is that this man, this slave on Nazareth, did he was he any value to the slave owner? Was he a worker? Did he do what he was supposed to do? What is the unprofitable? Which in times past was to thee unprofitable. And the thing is, Onassimus means profitable. That's the very name that he has been named. But while he was under Philemon's care, he's unprofitable according to Paul. Now that he saved, a servant helped to our Lord God and Savior. And Philemon. Paul is sending this man back who was once unprofitable. And he says now is profitable. So if Philemon had his slaves in for a service, here is one that will come. He will come on his own, and he'll work. Now, if that unprofitable is not salvation, but the character of Onassimus before salvation, look at what salvation has done for this man. If this is the case, I don't know, but... We got two avenues here. We got one salvation, and we know salvation is profitable. All that the benefits we get from God through Jesus Christ. That a lost man will perish and get the wrath of God, which is unprofit. And based upon the character of Old Nazareth, if we look at number two, salvation has not only brought this man to have his name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but now he's a worker. He's doing things. He's got the faith and he's got the works to back it up, James. And if it's the case of number two of who this character, this man is. Man, he did repent and he did about face and changed his life. And when you see somebody who's got off their knees after asking Christ to save their soul has come to Calvary, has exited through the, through the open tomb, and comes out and has changed to be a new creature. Salvation is real. Now, you still, you, we still battle. Listen, I did not give up smoke as much as easily I gave up alcohol. Alcohol, boom, it was gone. Smoke on the other hand. And we get those sins that stay with us. But Philemon has not had the opportunity 
to do anything with this man. Man ran away. We know Philemon is leading the church in his house. Here is a man, Onassis, he ran away. He's unprofitable. The opportunity to have not just workers under him, but saved workers. Doing the work in the growth of Jesus Christ and his duties. So, we started off the book, the one chapter. They're fellow laborers. They're fellow soldiers. There's a church in their house. There is preaching going on. There's the word of God going on. And I would assume beyond a shadow of doubt that these slaves that are under Philemon are hearing the gospel. And they're given the opportunity to receive Christ or not receive Christ. And there are men in his fields, or whatever it is. I don't know what it is, but it's fields. There are saved workers, and there are not saved workers. And according to Jesus, there are many that are not saved, and there are few that are saved. You say, well, how can you say that? Well, we got Onassimus, he's under Philemon, and he's not saved. So Philemon is not picking people and saying, are you Jesus Christ? Are you saved? Are you born again? All right, you work with me. He has lost and saved servants under his, his control. He has a church. And when we look at this one man, he's unsaved. He comes across Paul. Some way or another in Paul's bonds, they come together. And Paul's witnessing to him, probably watering of what the seed's been planted by Philemon. And Onassimus gets saved. And like the prodigal son, I want it's not the father, but I want to go back to my slave owner. I want to make things right. Does that, does that not sound like the prodigal son? The prodigal servant? His life is destructive. What does he have as a runaway slave? When Rome was, you know, you're either a free citizen or you were a slave. Okay, and again, maybe the unprofitable that Onassis was lazy or troublesome. And we've been looking at that. But in the realm, let's say salvation. Here is this slave, Onassimus, name written down in the last book of life, comes back to Philemon, who's saved, who's got a church in his house, and say, Master, whatever he called him, I'm saved, I'm born again, here's a letter from Paul, I'm going to go out in the fields, so I want to do the work I was supposed to do. I apologize if I owe you anything, whatever it is, let me make it right. Now, Philemon has what? He has one more saved Christian who's going to go out in the fields and do what he's supposed to, according to Paul. Paul is acknowledging the work of Philemon. Now, would Paul do that? All right. I forget who the other counterpart was, but let's take Mark with us. Paul's like, uh 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 uh. That man left us on the journey. I'm not taking it. Uh, Demas has left. Loving this present world. But I'll take Mark now. Take him. He's profitable. Paul has named, by name, people who have tried to deceive Christians in the church. Paul is sending a man who's saved and is willing to do what he's supposed to do. Paul, we read, wants to keep Onassimus. He wants... Onassimus to run away slave there so he can do work. And again, like I said, John Mark, until he learned, Demas left. And Paul never held or never ever tried to tie anybody up in the ministry. He didn't, listen, Paul was in bonds for the word of God, but that bond for the word of God doesn't mean you, hand, you get handcuffed. You're going to do this ministry. And there are colleges out there. you got to do this activity to get a grade and get a diploma from our school. That's wrong. What happened to free will? I know a, I know a school. 
you have to go street preach in order to get that diploma. Is that free will? Is that rewarding of God to them? That if they do not do what they're supposed to like that, I mean, aren't we supposed to be giving cheerful to God? But not necessariness. But so what we have here, Paul wants this man. And he's not going to tie him. Free will. We see free will in the book of Philemon. Now, the free will is not Onesimus, it's Philemon who owns Onesimus. You know what you do about slavery? There it is. It's in the Bible. Okay? There it is. So, as far as demons, I bet you it hurt Paul's heart when demons left. Look, go look and find Demas in the Bible in the concordance. Except for 2 Timothy chapter 4, man, Demas was used by Paul, used by Jesus Christ. Now, Onesimus is not just saved, but he's a worker and a helper in the ministry by the word of Paul in this letter of Philemon. Time has passed from unprofitable to now profitable. I like to keep him here with me, but if he stays there, he's going to do you all kind of good. What would somebody say about you and your characteristics as a Christian? Would they account for you to be profitable or unprofitable? What you do your conduct, your free will, where do you stand in the realm of profit and unprofit? There's no middle ground. You're going to be hot or you're going to be cold. Lukewarm, you make God sick. We got to get that straight. Now, what Paul does is right. He is sending a letter. He can't go himself. Him and Onassis cannot go walking to Philemon. He's in jail. He's bound for the word of God. The letter is of threefold. First, explains Onassis is saved. And I gotta wonder when they say that our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Onassis' name is in the Bible. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Now, is it possible, and I've heard this by many of you, is it possible that in the Bible somewhere is our names? Is the Bible the book of life? There are so many names from Genesis to Revelation. Now, for me, you're not going to find S-T-Y-L-Y. I'm saved. I'm born again. But the closest that you can find for my name, being odd as it is, my name is a made-up name. The closest you can get to it is a stylus. Style, stylus, a pen. I can find pen in the Bible. Iron pen. Written with the sins of Judah. Write with pen and ink. First John, second John, and third John. Onassimus means profitable. Maybe the name meaning of one of these names that's in the Bible is what you are. The Bible says we're going to get a new name. So first, Onassimus is saved. Second, he is a Christian worker. And Paul says, I like to keep him. That says much. Do you think Paul would take around lazy, weak Christians? If they were weak, he would raise them up and build them up and use them and grow them. I cannot feed you with meat, he told the Corinthian church, because, you know, you're, you're carnal. we got to grow you up. Timothy, you're ready. I'm going to send you into these places. Listen, he thought well of Timothy because he sent Timothy to, that, Timothy to that carnal church. Last. He is your property. 
Uh, well, you think about slavery, there it is. He is your property. That's the Apostle Paul. Now, I'm not one of them people that, you know, whatever Paul says, that's it, sign, seal, and deliver. No, I believe all the books, from Genesis to Revelation, the law, grace, salvation, the writings to the church, the writings of James, Peter, the Gospels, I believe it all. But here is Paul talking to a slave owner about a slave sending the slave back to the slave owner. There's no underground railroad here. He is your property, and I'll let you deal with him as such. So with this letter goes prayer of Paul. And reading through the epistles of Paul, he is a prayer warrior. So, Onasmith, run away from Philemon, comes across Paul, gets saved. First thing that Onassis wants to do, he wants to go back to his slave owner that he's done wrong, and he wants to get things right. And Paul says, well, let me write you a letter. I know finally. And by the way, I don't. and when this letter is written, we got to understand, does Onassis know what he's carrying? Does he know what the letter says? David wrote a letter. To Bathsheba's husband, going to Joab. And in that letter it says, Joab, you take this man, you put him in the most hottest battle there is, and the troops turn around and let him die. I can assume he never read that letter. Or he was such a faithful soldier that he brought that letter no matter what it said. There's two counts on that one too, you know. So we don't know what Philemon knows, but we know what Paul knows is he wants to come back to you. He wants to get right, but I'd rather have him here. So if Paul would rather have him here, Paul's like, hey, you got to go back. You want to go back, but I want you here. You got to get permission from your owner. So... Wouldn't it be great when Jesus Christ saves us? He kept us then. That moment I got saved, 773 Broad Street in Waterford, Connecticut, would have been great if the Lord said, All right, absent from the body, present with the Lord, my body just flopped down on the floor, and I went home to great heaven. Wouldn't that have been great? What about where you got saved? What if the date and time, the place you got saved, you got called up to heaven at that moment? At what point would you earn any crowns? At what point would you be able to have God say to you, Well done, thou good and faithful servant? At what point would you have the opportunity to witness to other people and tell people about Jesus Christ, to speak up and proclaim Jesus Christ is the Lord and able to save your soul? Had the Lord called me up that, that April 21st, that Saturday afternoon, there would have been no ministries on the streets. There would have been no flea markets, no farmer's market, no gospel tracts, no nothing, and no crown. Had Jesus Christ called me home at that moment. So now we're looking at Onassis as a saved Christian. He got saved. Paul, type of Jesus, is going to send him back. For what? For service. To do something. So, he sends him back with a letter to the church. Philemon's church. God sends me back with a letter to the church. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I got surety through the word of God. I know I'm saved. And Jesus Christ, I'd rather keep him. The Lord would love to have me home right now by his side. I'm his bride. The Lord is more anxious for the rapture to happen than we are for the rapture to happen. But he'd be better serving you. And Paul writes in the epistles, it'd be better that 
absent from the body, be present with the Lord, but it's more needful that I am here with you. In telling the world about me, Jesus Christ, and aiding the church in its growth, I have witnessed to lost people, and I have tried to help Christians to grow. I can't do that if I'm at the presence of Jesus Christ. I can't do that when I'm at the throne of God. So why am I here? To witness to loss and to help the save. That's why I'm here. In Romans, I mean Revelation chapter 4, that gives God the glory. I'm not ready to be before the holy, holy, holy yet. And yet, with the gospel, with the Bible, I bring the holy, holy to the lost and to the saved. To grow. Helping the saints. Till the rapture does come, or death. And that is why we're here. Christians, you may ask yourself, why am I here? you got a duty. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Preach in season, out of season. Exhort. Rebuke. And that's just not the pastors. That's to your family. That's to your friends. That's to people in the church. Help them to grow. Help them to do right. Encourage them. Pray for them. A witness to be helpful to Philemon. Who here will become a type of church. Man, the typology here is so vast and and one switches to another. The church needs more Onassimus. Saved and serving and repenting and getting right and changing from the old world to the new world. Becoming that new creature. While still battling the flesh. Now Onassimus got his sins. He's sinning. He proclaims to God his sins and gets it right and battles sins. But look what Paul is saying. He is profitable. What would you say about churches today? We seen a guy today on one of them Christian magazines at the checkout at the store. That is unprofitable, Mr. Smiley White Teeth. And yet, you make a profit from people that serve under you, and you're supposed to be ministering to them. How can you minister to people with a yacht, with an airplane, and with big fancy cars, and they're giving you all their riches as you deceive them? You got it all wrong. They got it all wrong. Men and women who are slaves to the devil, as Onesimus was once time, as Philemon was once time, as Paul was killing Christians one time. Did not Paul become a new creature? He's out there, he's killing them, he's putting them in prison, he gets saved, and he walks in the church house, and everybody's scattered. Oh, here he is, he's coming. No, wait a minute, guys, wait, 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 I'm a Christian now. Watch me witness, watch me preach. And that same thing that happened to Paul is happening to Onesimus. That weak, unregarded slave has now become a prophet. Both ways. He has become, an, uh, he's become a prophet that he can tell people of heaven and hell. And he's become a prophet of a desire to Philemon and Paul. I'm not talking about money either. So, a witness to help Philemon. Help those servants that are saved. What better to have a slave to another slave? What would it be better to have a blue-collar worker witnessing and, and, and aiding and helping another blue-collar worker? You know? 
Remember Israel in, in Egypt? Then under Joshua into the promised land. Egypt was the labor that they had to be done. And for Joshua, it was done because they wanted to do it. Build those places for Pharaoh. Make, a, make your brick. Come on. Had to have taskmasters. Make them bricks. Make them. All right, we're going to take an offering for the Lord. Gold, silver, uh, gems, anything you got. And uh, Moses, yes, what's wrong? We've got too much. you got to tell them to stop bringing. And then when it came time to build that tabernacle, it was boom. Moses, here's everything that you need. We're all slaves to something. We all serve something. Most of the time it's not God. It ought to be. God is our slave owner. He purchased us with his blood. I owe nothing and have no bonds to but God the Father through Jesus Christ. He paid for me. You know what the hardest thing for an, an African American in this country is today to believe on God the Father and Jesus Christ because they don't want to see that servant to. That was wicked. That's bad. We got rights. You got a right to burn in hell without Jesus. That's your right. And that's what your taskmaster Satan will have you to believe. Hell. We are part here for service. We're not couch potatoes. We're to go. We're to put our armor on. We're to carry a Bible. We're to study. We're to teach. We're to preach. You know what Paul says we sleep? When they have passed on and have died. That's your sleeping. I say it over and over in my ministry. Christians are verbs. Verb is an action. We are not nouns. We are not chairs, couch potatoes, beds, etc. Every sentence needs a noun, a Christian, and every sentence needs a verb, action. Now that balls again we read. Balls. The medical field has taken that word and used it for grossness. It is Paul sending with his heart. It is Paul sending on Nazareth with his stomach. How is Paul doing that? He's fasting. He's not drinking water. <coughs> or wine. His heart is going with love and his stomach's crying out, Will you feed me? No. I want to pat I want to fast and pray for Onassis as he goes forth. Tell me what our whole entire body does when we fast and pray to God. It's love and afflictions. When Christians left because God has removed them for other work. Why did that family go away? Why did they? Because God has a place for them. I got a dear family that, that left many years and they're coming back. I missed them. But they had service. And I was able to take part in that service. And in the Christian ministry, like Paul with, with Onassimus and Paul with even Demas and with Timothy and all that. Bye. Hope to see you again. Tell them I'm praying for them. You take this letter to them. I'm praying for you guys. I hope you guys get. You're not supposed to settle down and buckle up and get in as Christians. You're not supposed to be clicks. We're supposed to be moving. We're supposed to be going. We're not to build a, a community Christian center. We gotta go out and preach the gospel. Your Jerusalem, your Samaria, and the outer parts of the world. That's what the Bible says. Too many. Sit down. Again, I think this tore Paul's heart. Over and over, you had to say goodbye to people. 
for the work in the ministry. But please, Tim Moore, to have John Mark come back and have learned and have grown. Take John Mark, he is profitable. Did you get that? He's profitable. Take Onassimus. Oh, that guy, he is so great. He's doing so well. Use him. Come on, Fireman. Please take him back. But I don't mean take him back. I mean, take him back and forgive him for everything he's done. But will you send him back to me? Because he can do me great things. But I miss him for the ministry. And what's he say about demon? Demon's love. Love this present world. I gotta find somebody else I can grow. I gotta work on these people here to grow. Paul is telling Philemon, I cannot keep him. Even if I wanted to, he belongs to you. Do you see the typology here? April 20th, I belong to Satan. He was my father. April 21st, I received Jesus Christ at Calvary. I came out of that empty tomb as a Christian saved under the blood of Jesus Christ. And salvation, the Holy Spirit came in me and dwelt in me. I became a child of God. And I am now a child of God. I am never going back to Satan. Can't. Never can. I'm God's. Satan may walk up to the throne and say, I want him back. Oh, let's do it. He's mine. I'm only going to let you do what I tell you you can do with him. And that's it. Job 1 and Job 2. But as far as the slave, by Nemo, own the man. Own Asinus. That's what the Bible says. I guarantee that there are... There are black people out there, they love the Lord, they're saved, and, and man, they're in their Bible, and they're saying, Amen, preacher, preacher. You got yourself a black person dedicated to the Lord, he knows what the truth is. He's not offended. It's history. It's gone. Let's go on. I have plenty of black friends. I still do. Paul needs permission from Philemon. The Philemon owns him. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife and his man servant. Oh boy, Paul, what'd you just do? You want someone's man servant. Aren't you glad you're not under the law anymore? This coveting is not lust. It's for service. There is a good company. Oh, I wish there are people today in China and Japan and nations like that. They want a Bible and they can't get it. Are you going to say that coveting is a sin? Or his maid, sir. Or his ox. Or his ass. Or anything of thy neighbors. Paul would not steal. He wants him. But not enough to break God's word. How's that? What would others think of if Paul had a runaway slave running around with him? And yet the Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. So you see the Ten Commandments is enacted for the Christian life. It's just not for salvation. You don't steal. You do not bear false witness. You do not commit adultery. You honor your parents. Those are proper, but they won't save you. But that will make you stand out by faith and works, by your conduct and what you do. That having a saved worker can be a benefit to Philemon. It can be a blessing from God. The necessity may be that Philemon needs him, Onassis, more than Paul. I'm asking you he come back, but maybe you have more need of him than I do. 
You see, in order for Philem to release Old Nasmith to Ball, he's going to have to break that ownership and give Old Nasmith freedom. Even if he stays on the phylum, there's that freedom that you can do or you don't have to do. But maybe this man would be more profitable to phylum. Paul doesn't know. The willing could be that phylum feels opposite. That he would be more help to Paul than himself. That Philemon would grant his freedom to serve God through Paul. Now Philemon has two options here. Man, he could be a blessing to me and my household. And all that I have. And in my church. Or, he could be a complete blessing to Paul. And all his work that needs to be done. That may put Philemon like, I gotta pray now. Thank you very much. Here's this man that I was mad at. Now I got, is he going to be good for me? Is he going to be better for Paul? Is he better for me? And what do I do? Over the salvation of a man. The question is, who needs him the most? And where shall he go? But first, Onassimus needs to make amends with his master. And pay any debts owed to. You read nothing as such when it comes to American history of the slaves. The Underground Railroad, the runaway slaves. Nothing about the, re the redemption, the, the, the making restitution. Maybe not redemption, restitution. The day of reckoning. Now, if you listen to my ministries, you've heard this many times. I was saved April 21st, 1987. I went to church the next day, which is Sunday. I made the pro a public profession to all. I received Christ as my Savior. When church service was over, I went to my dad's house. I went up to my dad, and I tried to witness to him. I've been witnessing ever since 1987. He has not gotten saved. And between then and now, it was not too long after I was witnessing to him, I sat down and wrote my father a letter. I said, Dad, I stole money from you. You know and I know I stole money from you. I'm talking $20 bills at times. You write down what I owe you. I'm a Christian now. I want to make things right. You write down what, what I owe you. I'll try to pay it back. With all my heart. Day of Reckoning. Christ has forgiven me for all my sins, but I've got to go back to those that I've done wrong to. <coughs> I went back to my dad. And I gave him the letter. And he read it. And he done something that he realized what he didn't do, that Jesus done for me. He forgave me of all my debt. Now, he has not ever asked Jesus Christ to forgive his debt of sin, but he forgave me. Like old Nass was going back to find him, I went back to my dad and I'd done wrong. I went back to my mom. She was unsaved at that time. Now saved, thank God. I said, Mom, I, I was a terrible child. I was a miserable son to you. I apologize to you for all the gray hairs, all the worries, all the troubles I won't even get into. One period of time in my life, I gave my mother a hard time. Very hard. And she forgave me. And that's what finally, I mean, that's what Onassimus is doing to finally him now. Whatever wrong he did that he ran away. They were encouraged Americans to continue running. Not to make amends. Paul says, go back. What was the result of the rebellious nature? Ghettos. Prisons filled with black men, and I've been since the prison ministry since 2004. Don't tell me, I've been behind the bars as a prison minister. 
as in prison ministry, as a chaplain in the prison. I've been behind those gates. I know what color skins are behind those jails. Many of you don't. I've got a lot of friends with them still today. They do not turn to God anymore. They turn to welfare and the state for their God. Small G-O-D. Their preachers preaches about civil rights and not the gospel. They preach socialism and not Bibleism. I can use that as a word. From cotton fields of hymns about Jesus Christ. Of glory to the Father in Jesus Christ. Of those fields. And I probably blew many people away by now. And what do they got today? They got rap. And songs about killing. And songs about uh, doing harm to cops. And drugs. And alcohol. And sex. That is the fruit. Now what do you think the fruit will, will be? of Onassimus. Let's take a look here. Colossians chapter 4 verse 9 with Onassimus, a faithful and beloved brother who is one of you. Wow, look at that. Colossians 4 and 18. It's uh, in, the, in the title it's uh, written from Rome to the Colossians by Tychicus and Onassimus. Philemon 1.10, I beseech thee for my son Onesimus. We read there. And then verse 125, again in the, in the uh, because subtitle thereof, he's called a servant. He's a servant of Jesus Christ. Onesimus has, has died, passed on. I can tell you where Onassimus is today by the testimony of Paul. He's absent with the body and present with the Lord. He's there with Paul today. He's there with Timothy. He's there with Onassimus. Oh, wait, that's him. I keep doing that. He's there with Philemon. And all the other saved saints that are with the Lord today. And he's with many colored saints that were slaves. Our saved. Enjoying the fellowship of them beasts crying holy, holy, holy. As those saints of God are now and have been standing before Jesus Christ. And we haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg on this book. Become a new creature after you're saved. Put the old life away. Repent of your sins. Turn. Get right. Get things right in your past life. Especially your mom and your dad. And maybe your siblings. Seek forgiveness. And like I said, both my cases, they turned out good. I've had a pastor after I've saved. I have wrote him two times. And he, he's done me wrong. Both. But in case I've ever done any wrong, and I'm not innocent, I'm a sinner. In case I've done, I wrote him twice. And both them times, they have been nasty replies back. Nothing about receiving my, if I had done anything wrong. I don't know. Maybe I done. And not once has he ever apologized for the things I told him that I felt was wrong done to me. And not all those times are people going to, oh, okay, yeah, just forget. You may not get that forgiveness. But at least you got the forgiveness under the blood of Jesus Christ. Be used of God. Go ye all the world and preach the gospel and, and uphold and uplift the saints of God. That's why we're here.